Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. I am Kimberly, the host of the Manifesto on Purpose show, and I have a treat for you today. I have a very special guest. Allow me to introduce my special guest because I know that he's not going to do it justice, so I'm going to do the introduction for him. Today's special guest is astronomer mm, no. World-renowned astro-numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn. He is a best-selling author, a master teacher, a lecturer, broadcaster, reader of countless celebrity clients, has been interviewed by the likes of Oprah Winfrey and Katie Kirk, and now owns his very own astro-numerology app. Please help me welcome Master numerologist Lloyd Strayhorn. Hi, Kimberly. Hi, Lloyd. How are Thank you today? Kimberly. Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me back. It's been a while and it's a pleasure. Thank you. No, it's an honor to have you back. I'm so glad to have you here. And as you know, we can count the number of days left in this year on our fingers. So, what I wanted to do today was to help our guest out a little bit because everybody's been wondering what 2024 holds in store for them. And I know you're just the person to tell us that. But before we get into that, I want you to tell us for the people that may be hearing your voice for the first time, what numerology is, what astro numerology is, and how it can benefit us in our life. Uh, numerology, Kimberly, is actually hundreds of thousands of years old. When Alexander the Great was in Chaldea in 350 BC, they told him then it was hundreds of thousands of years old. It's an ancient African science. It is the kissing cousin to astrology. A lot of people think astrology got here first, but actually it is numerology that got here first and foremost. And so what happens is numerology is a metaphysical way of looking at numbers and how they guide you. And so then when you combine astrology, I therefore combine the word that's now very popular called astronumerology, which is combining both worlds. So for example, a person can't be a Leo anymore. They could be a Leo four person or a person could be an Aquarius eight person. So there's a sign and a number that we all possess. And once you understand that, it helps a person guide them. This is why every Gemini isn't the same way, every Cancerian isn't the same way, or all the stereotypical notions we have for each of the signs in the Zodiac. Because the date of birth of which that person's sign is born on modifies the Zodiac sign of that person. So for example, one time when I was interviewing uh, actress Pam Greer, now Pam Greer is born on May 26 and two plus six is eight. So they was, oh, oh, she's a Gemini, but she's a Gemini eight person and eight is earth. So when I interviewed her, you know, I thought maybe she, you know, when I asked what you like to do, which is, you know, like continue more my acting career, she said she liked the farm, but that's an earth number. So it just goes to show you how these things work. So I can do this all day long. I love doing this. And it helps people help them understand themselves because we're so busy looking in other directions for guidance that we need to look under our own backyard and discover for ourselves what we possess. All of us possess something, gift or skill or ability or talent. It's just, we got to focus on ourselves. So does that mean that I'm not just like all the other Leos? That's right. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Um, for example, you are a Leo, but you're Leo 22, born on the 22nd of August. So now we all know Leos are bold, magnanimous, generous, explorers, pioneers, inventors, futurists, stuff like that. But the date of birth modifies it. So you're born on the 22nd, which in numerology is considered one of the master numbers. And the master number is that which has the ability, whoever possesses this quality, to take things that are just conceptual in the mind and translate it into things that are concrete. 
that people can examine and touch and feel and see for themselves, you see. So that's what makes the master number important. So let's say you got like Angela Bassett, she's a Leo too, but she's born on the 16th day of the month. One plus six is seven. She brings to it a whole different style. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's got their own. So if you look at Marcus Garvey, who was a Leo born on August 17th, he brings maturity, understanding, things of that nature. Everybody brings their specialness to the table amongst the stars and amongst the numbers. Wow, that's amazing. It's so good that we can all be different instead mm -hmm. of just being categorized with all of the rest of the people in that sign. We all have our unique characteristics and traits. Thank that's you it. for letting us know that first and foremost. I hear you talk about cycles in numerology. And lately, since it's getting close to the end of the year, I've been hearing a lot about universal cycles. Can you tell us what a universal cycle is and what you can expect in a universal cycle? Yes, universal cycle. The word universal means just that. Everyone, there are no exceptions. There are no exclusions. Every single entity, every single species from the lowest to the highest of man is all under the influence of a universal year. So in this case, since this year is about a wrap for the most part, we can deal with 2024, which is coming up. So it's simple. Two plus zero plus two plus four equals eight. Just that simple. OK, and that's what got me into this. I said, man, this stuff is so simple. It's, the numbers only go from one to nine. I got 10 fingers. I got this. That thing got a hold of me and it's been a journey ever since. So universal means that an eight, by the way, is symbolic. First of all, each number is ruled by a planet and each planet governs a zodiac sign. So 2024 adds up to an eight and is governed by the planet of Saturn. Saturn rules the planet of Capricorn. So they, of all the 12 signs of the Zodiac, go to the head of the class this year. Next, Aquarius. That happens to be me. Thank you. Okay. okay. And so they go to the head of the class, followed by Librans. Or numerically, if they're born on the 8th, the 17th, 1 plus 7 is 8, or the 26th, 2 plus 6 is 8, they are the ones that go to the head of the class. Now, it doesn't mean that the other Zodiac signs are not going to do well. In fact, I'll, I'll explain all of that later on in the interview. But the point is that these will be the major drivers. These will be the people who will actually spearhead this year going forward. Capricorns, Aquarians, um, Librans, or people born on the 8th, the 17th, or the 26th. Well, what does an eight universal year mean? Okay. Eight is normally associated with money, the ability to be able to purchase things, power, the ability to make things happen and whatnot, recognition, <clears throat> that being recognized for a job well done, achievement, the ability to go up the ladder of life towards success, recognition by your peers and things like that. It is also a pregnancy cycle. So I would expect this year that the pregnancies will increase. Um, you know, the birth rates will go up by, if we look at next year uh, of 2024 and the 2025, they'll say, you know, the birth rates really shot up this year, you know, but things are also in numerology in symbolic terms as well. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean pregnancy by birth, but it could be pregnancy in terms of giving birth to a new idea, a new plan, a new enterprise, a new uh, entity, a new endeavor, a new goal or objective. And in fact, if I had to summarize an eight personal year, an eight universal year rather, I would call it the finance and a romance cycle. So when I say that, it means love, marriage, separation, divorce, births, pregnancies, moving into a home, moving out of a home. So when I say marriage, the possibilities people will get engaged or marry. There could be some people that feel that their time in the relationship has expired and they, de they either outgrow each other and whatnot, because the eight is a very philosophical entity that one becomes very philosophical about their lives. Every single one, there are no exclusions, some to a greater or lesser degree, but all of us will be looking at, you know, the 
you know, what part have I been playing on life stage with the, the cast of characters that's come into my life vis-a-vis -vis brothers and sisters, relationships, children, mates, coworkers, bosses, whatever the case is on whatever level. And we begin to look at it in a more meta philosophical way. It's like we reach the maturity of growing up. Now, true, we're all grown, we are adults, but I'm talking about we take it to a higher level. We take it to another level of understanding the purpose of our lives and again, what part we're playing on life stage. And in addition, it also means moving into a home, moving out of a home, um, <clears throat> rearranging or feng shuiing the home. Um, and in addition to that, eight, when I say the romantic side, it normally means either someone older than you would normally deal with, or it could be somebody from your past, a high school relationship, a relationship from college, or whatever the case is, a neighborhood relationship, um, things of that nature. But the third choice that most women tend to like, in my experience, is they meet somebody who has who can help them financially and materially get to the next step. Almost always the women volunteer for number three category. Not someone from the past, not when someone older, but can they help them get to the next level materially or financially? So each of the zodiac signs are going to be affected. Each of the date of births are going to be affected as well, uh, looking at their cycles to greater or lesser degrees. And so that is one of the things that uh, makes this year so interesting. And then there is the personal year. Now, the universal year says what everybody is going to go through, regardless of their sign, regardless of their birth number. But if you want to know your personal year, then you take the month, the day you were born. And instead of adding the year you were born, you take the year you want to know about. So let's take that example of August the 22nd. So if I take August the 22nd and add it to 2024, it happens to add up to an 11 master number year. Now see in numerology, the numbers go from one to nine, but there are master numbers there, there, when I was coming into this, there were just two primarily, 11 and 22. Now it's 11, 22, 33, 44, all the way up to 99. But traditionally in numerology, there were just two master numbers, the 11 and the 22. The master number 11 in the case of this individual, as an example, I just used August 22nd, means that the, their consciousness is going to raise to a higher level. It's, it's like they get these ideas from on high. They, they get these great inventive ways of doing things. Uh, they'll be at a bus stop or just casually waiting and all of a sudden this great idea comes to them. So I tell people when they're in the 11 year, have a pad or pencil or be ready to talk into your phone and leave a note about this idea because it'll be so simple, incredibly amazing that you say, ah, I remember when I get home. Man, by the end of the day and, and with all the activities and whatnot, uh, you'd be lucky if you can remember half of what you thought about. But it also is a transitional type of period for those in a master number 11. Transition in the diet, transition in relationships, and transition trans, transitions in the workplace. So it's not just a two because one plus one is two. You don't reduce the 11, but it's understanding that it just goes at a it just goes at a higher level so everybody goes through their personal year cycles whatever those cycles may be that i explained in my best-selling book numbers in you a numerology guide for everyday living so this is this is how we do it <clears throat> so we can start with the zodiac signs for example so let's say we'll start with aries right so for aries if a person is an Aries, or if they're born on the 8th, the 17th, or the 26th of the month, this will be their year where they come of age. This is a year where they aim for the sun, even if they only hit the moon, but they, they go for the stars. They think big, they they think great. This is since, since it's an eight universal year, and for Aries, they will be going through this same cycle too. This will be a good time for them to really, really settle down, really mature in their way of understanding and making those moves and whatnot. And this is going to be very important to them. And Aries will find that Capricorns, Aquarians, and Librans will play a very important role in their affairs. Now, let's say you have a Taurus. 
out there in the viewership, okay? That means that for them, this year is going to be about a change. And this would include anybody born on the 5th, the 14th, or the 23rd of any month. Five, <clears throat> or the change is always for the better for any zodiac sign. So for Tauruses in particular, it's going to be like they're at a midway point or at a fork in the road, and they have to make a decision as to which way they want to go with their lives. Some, But almost always, though, it's about a change for the better. Some want a change in better health, better relationship, better career, better finances, better travel, better whatever the case is. But the point is that all the zodiac signs under the, all, I should say, all of those under the sign of cancer will feel this, this shift. And this goes for anybody born on the 5th, the 14th, or the 23rd of any month. Now, let's say we have Geminis. Well, for Geminis, this is going to be a time for them to kind of really tighten up their act, to really get it structured and organized. And this also includes anybody born on the 4th, the 13th, the 22nd, or the 31st of the month. Because if you're born on those dates, you will be affected to some degree uh, in that way too. Having a sense of order, a sense of purpose, a sense of direction, where boundaries are set. And it's the kind of year that what you put in is what you get back. Nothing in, nothing out. It's very simple. And if a person under the sign of Gemini or those dates of birth that add up to a four, really put on their grind, really do their business and handle and do what they got to do and put their shoulders to the wheels, as they used to say, they will find that the, the measure of what they put in will turn back an equal fold. So if you do nothing, you don't get nothing. It's very simple. But if you work hard and put forth that effort, that will be returned in kind too. So the next one would be cancer. Now for cancers, <clears throat> they're going to be starting fresh. They're going to be starting new. They're going to have this sense of adventure to begin to start things all over again to begin to say, all right, I want to explore this area, explore that area. Now, cancers are normally the most gentle, most loving, caring, maternal sign in the zodiac. But a lot of cancers will be feeling a sense of what's in it for me. What am I getting out of this? And this would also include anybody born on the 1st or the 4th, the 10th or the 13th, the 19th, the 22nd, 28th or 31st of the month. They're going to step forward in a sense to take charge of their lives, to do what they have to do, to handle their business. And so for cancers, it's going to be important that whatever you carve out for 2024, you can expect that to tag along with you over the next several years ahead. So for all cancers, they need to pick and choose very, very wisely for their best results. Now, let's say a person is a Leo, right? That means for Leos, they are going to be going through a cycle, and this would include anybody born on the 9th, the 18th, or the 27th of the month. Well, they're going to be going through a phase where enough is enough, someone or something has got to go. But at the same time, it's going to be a cycle for Leos where the things they've been wanting to manifest, and especially they want to manifest with a purpose, that will be quite achievable for them. It is about closures and terminations and endings and letting bygones be bygones and let water under the bridge and don't look back or it's that kind of thing. And they're going to find <clears throat> that in addition to letting go and manifesting their dreams, that it will give them an opportunity to take long distance trips. They may travel physically. They may travel mentally. They may travel by way of books, but there's going to be some traveling or they may find a person from a great distance come their way in the course of the year of 2024. So now let's go to Virgo next. <clears throat> For Virgos, or if anybody again is born on the 4th, the 13th, or the 22nd, or the 31st. For Virgos, Virgos are normally normally um, are very conservative, but this year Virgos need to begin to think outside the box. They've got to think outside the norm. They got, you know, Virgo is an earth sign, and therefore, they are normally very traditional, very practical, very grounded in the way they do think. But for all Virgos, having a little bit of flexibility will take them a long way this particular year. And it will find that um, along the way that things that they thought would go plan 
goes just the opposite. So the more they plan, which Virgos like to do, um, because they like to analyze, which is one of the sayings of that sign I analyze, well, they're going to have to analyze some flexibility. They're going to have to analyze some unexpected or sudden or things like that that was not part of the plans at all. And this is very, very important. And so they will find that, and, and since they will be going through a health cycle and Virgo is a health sign, it is very important that they stay on top of their health, which I'll talk about generally uh, for all the signs and all the numbers as, uh, as far as that's concerned. For Librans, Librans are going to go through a transitional sign. And this would also include, again, those that are born on the 5th, the 14th, or the 23rd of any month. Again, it is about finding the direction you wish to go. It's like a turning point that you now have a chance to make a, a, a dynamic shift, uh, a shift in the paradigm of how you do things and the way things have been doing. And since the cycle you will be going through will bring you out before the public, you need to take advantage to social engagements, writing, lectures, speaking, teaching, learning, things of that nature. There will be a lot of opportunities coming Libra's way and they have to be on top of it. And this includes anybody that's born on the 5th the 14th or the 23rd of the month in and of itself. Next, we have Scorpio. Now, Scorpio is going, it's interesting because eight symbolically represents death or rest from labor. And the sign of Scorpio rules the eighth house, which is the house of death or rest from labor. So Scorpios might feel that they need to put some things behind them. They need to put things to rest once and for all. They need to become more philosophical and be the eighth cycle. And with Scorpios, there will be things that are happening, but it will almost as appears that fate or destiny will come in and take a hand and step in that direction. They will plan to do this, but they wind up doing that. They thought they would get with this person, but they wind up getting with that person instead. So it's, it's like to be flexible. It's like to be fluid a little bit but yet still be on your grind, still be doing the things you need to do. And this again would include people born on the 8th to 17th or the 26th of the month as well. And with Scorpios, they are really going to reconnect with people they haven't seen and heard a long time, or the past will catch up to them in a way, not in a bad way necessarily, but some, some things that they forgot about will kind of come past their doorstep in the course of the year of 2024. Then we have Sagittarius. Well, Sagittarius will be going through a cycle where they have to take it easy. Now, Sagittarius is a fire sign and they're very, very active as a rule. But this is a time for Sagittarius when they need to slow their road. And especially if a person is born on the 2nd or the 7th, the 11th or the 16th, the 20th, the 25th or the 29th of the month. It simply means partnering with people. Sagittarians are normally very independent. They're very self-reliant. They rule the world of entertainments, the arts and things of that nature. But yet they'll find that this year of 2024, they're going to have to collaborate with other people. They're going to have to team with like-minded people going in the same direction as they are. Now, a lot of this is modified by the date of birth, but I'm talking about Sagittarius in general. All the signs I'm talking about is the signs in general. But specifically, they will be conscious of their dietary laws, their associations. They're going to be feng shui in their house, rearranging the furniture, things of that nature. And they're going to want to get into the weeds. They want to get into the details. They want to get into the nuts and bolts, which is normally what Sagittarians don't have time for. But this particular year, they're going to find that these little things will capture their attention just as much as the big things. Next, we have Capricorn. Now, the year favors Capricorn in and of itself, but for Capricorns, it's going to be more of a reflective kind of uh, period. It's going to be one where many of the Capricorns might go back to church, become born again Christians, get psychic readings, go to psychic fairs, and then they're going to have some interesting dreams. But with Capricorns, especially since this year governs Capricorn now, this also governs those who are born on the 2nd to 7th, the 11th to 16th, the 20th to 25th, or the 29th of the month. But not only are they 
be more aware of what's around them, they're gonna question why they do the things they do because the nature of it will make them begin to go down the rabbit hole of life to look for not why did you say that, but why did you say it and what does that mean? So they're gonna go very deep. Um, Capricorns are gonna have a lot of interesting dreams where they wake up and say, what in the world was that about? They're gonna have feelings of prophetic dreams and prophetic dreams admits in a sense that they'll step out of a cab or wait on a bus and all of a sudden they could remember the scenario that almost shocked them into some kind of like, wow, I remember this, you know what I'm saying? Almost frightened them, such as the real reality of it. Um, they're going to be going to a thing and I will say this, seven or Capricorns will be going through what I call the law of attraction that whatever they're thinking, that's what they will manifest, okay? So if you're gonna manifest on purpose this year, manifest with all of the intention of knowing exactly what it is you want and why. Not willy nilly, well, I'm, you know, I wanna manifest on some new sneakers or some shoes or a pocketbook. That's, that's not what that's about. I'm talking about taking it to a high level in terms of the goals they want the objectives you want, the relationships you want to have, or how they can be improved. All of these things will be very important and meaningful for um, all Capricorns and those pe people that are born on a date that adds up to two or the seven. Next is Aquarius. Now, Aquarius is going to be a very busy time for them. And it and this also includes anybody that's born on the 3rd, the 12th, the 21st, or the 30th of the month. They too, going into the year of 2024, is going to find that a lot of things are going to be opening up for them, that they're going to be seem to be getting the right contacts, the right networks or things of that nature. Um, they're going to be going through what is called a Jupiter influence, which means Jupiter is going to be expanding. The fact that Pluto has gone into the sign of Aquarius recently will stay there to 2044 means there's gonna be a transition all around for Aquarians. And so those who become winners become losers. Those who've been losers become winners. It's gonna be a very interesting journey and experience for all Aquarians to a greater or lesser degree during the period of 2024. And then finally, the Pisces. Now the Pisces is gonna be going through a visionary cycle. And this includes those that are born on the second, but especially the 11th, the 20th and the 29th of the month. They're going to be transitioning, but on a way that's at a higher level than is normal. I mean, whether it's uh, going from like a, a pauper to a palace, it's like going from a low to a high, uh, but they're gonna find that if they follow their first instinct, and it's interesting that Pisces is known of all of the signs in the Zodiac, Pisces is known as the psychic sign of the 12. And so the cycle that they will be going through will only increase their psychic tendencies, psychic abilities. And um, it's very interesting. I heard a lecture uh, not too long ago about following your intuition. And if Pisces follow their intuition, their first mind, so to speak, their spirit guide, they will find that they will tend to be more in the right place at the right time in harmony with the universe. But for matters of love and affections and tenderness, this is an excellent year for them. If they want to rearrange in a home that's more comfortable and relaxing and secure for them, it's also a good time for them. And if they want to change up the, the way of how they've been working and whatnot, that will be made available too. So that is it for the zodiac signs. Now, I must say this, in every year, regardless of the universal year or your personal year, there is always a phenomenon that takes place three times a year called Mercury retrograde. Mercury is the planet of communications. When Mercury is retrograde, it just is another fancy way of saying it just slowed down. It's not going at its normal pace, maybe say 50, 60 miles an hour. Now it's going maybe 20, 30 miles an hour. It's still going, but now it's going slow at a snail's pace almost. And this is when people have the most serious of arguments the silliest of understandings, the silliest of miscommunication. Lloyd, you said, meet me at three. I said, no, you said, meet me at four. And then we get into a beat. And then when Mercury goes directly, we're trying to figure out what were we arguing about in the first place. This is not a time when Mercury goes retrograde to assume. 
They're going to Mercury retrograde always lasts a period of 21 days. And this year of 2024, they're all under the fire signs. So the first one is on April 1st. And it always lasts a period of 21 days. So from April 1st and 21 days after, Mercury will be retrograde, okay? Then the next retrograde will be on August the 4th under the sign of Leo. And that will last a period of 21 days. And that will be under a fixed sign. And then the last one will be on November 25th under the sign of Sagittarius. And that will be under a mutable sign, which means you got to be more fluid, more flexible, and things of that nature. This is when this is not the best time during these Mercury retrograde periods this year to buy electronics, a car. This is when the phone acts up, the computers act up, miscommunications act up, things get lost. Although the rule is if you lose something, normally you have a better chance of finding it, especially if you haven't found it in a, in a while during Mercury retrograde. But it's normally things go afoul. And also for those that got important appointments, leave a little extra early, even though tops, you know, you'll be there in 20 minutes. It'll be your luck. There'll be a, a crash or something that'll slow down the process. And that 15 minutes turn into a half hour. Then you build up the anxiety because now you're rushing and you're late. And, you know, by the time you get there, you, you're kind of disjointed. So it's about taking your time, double checking everything. And here's the most important thing too. When you meet a person of importance that you want to know and you get their phone number, and you're writing their phone number down now. If they give you a card, a business card, that's one thing. But if you're writing it down, let's say, for example, the number, the last four numbers of the person's number they give you is 0716. You'll hear 0716, but you write it 0761. So what you do in a case when you meet somebody influential or very important, it could be important as a contact or something like that later, repeat the number back to them. You will find. Oftentimes, what you say, what you wrote, <laughs> is not what you heard, okay? This is Mercury retrograde. So once you understand that, that's good. Also, let me talk about health. Each number rules a part of the body. So with the number eight universal year we're in, eight rules headaches, the knees, the teeth, the bones, and misdiagnosis, okay? Okay. So with the women, if they have a problem with the knee, it would probably be more to the left side. With the men, more to the right side. There could be an increase of headaches. Um, all of a sudden, migraines, where these migraines are coming from, the best one is oil of oregano. Now, I'm not a doctor. Go see your medical doctor so you don't have no drama. But the point is, oil of oregano, a couple of drops under the tongue, will minimize headaches. Diagnosis, misdiagnosis is one thing to be careful of because, ironically, the third leading cause of death in this country of U.S. citizens behind heart attacks and cancer is medical prescriptions and medical misdiagnosis, okay, or medical mistakes. So that is the third leading cause. And since eight is that kind of energy where people tend to be misunderstood, people in the eight is going to be a lot of misdiagnosis. So here's what it tells me to go get a second opinion. Now, for something general, a headache, toothache, something like that. But if it's, it's deemed in, in, their, in their examination that it's something kind of like really terrible or really serious, go get a second opinion. Actually, you should always get a second opinion anyway. But do not tell the second doctor what the first doctor said. You want to see if independent of that first doctor that the second doctor come up with the same conclusion. Now, if they come up with the same conclusion, then maybe they got something going. But if you say, well, listen, doctor number two, my primary doctor said so and so and so, he'll give you an exam. But in the back of his mind, he's remembered what the first primary doctor told you and will focus on that too. You want to see if independent of the first one, that the second one kind of comes in the ballpark or on the exact spot of what may be the cause. But with number eight, there's a tendency to be not only misdiagnosed, given the wrong medical treatment, given the wrong medical prescriptions, now, this is not all eights, but mostly people in this country, because we're in an eight personal year, will have to be a little bit more mindful of it. So that, in a word, is a gist of what it is. Again, it is about romance, excuse me, finances first, romance is second, and, um, 
And also the real estate business should do well too, because eight is an earth number. So it means moving into a home, moving out of a home, selling of a home and whatnot. So it all depends on the home, the, the address of that home and what days and what months is best to sell them, which is a whole nother story for another time. Thank you, Lord. I have a question for you. Okay. I have I a lot questions. of questions for I love you. Questions. I love questions. I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, one of my questions is you said that there are certain signs and certain numbers that go to the head of the class. Mm -hmm. Are there any signs and numbers that need to be more cautious this year? Yes. Good question. The ones that need to be cautious this year more than any other would be Gemini cancer and virgo now and and oftentimes you know that's a good question but normally i i put more emphasis on the positive because therefore a gemini or cancer or virgo says see i know i'm gonna get it and then they think they're gonna hide under a rock it's not about hiding under a rock and then they're gonna be some gemini's that will do exceptionally well like certain cancers or certain virgos again it all depends on the date of birth so, for example, if you got a Gemini, Cancer, or Virgo born, a Gemini 8 born on the 26th, the 8th, or the 17th, that will prove an exception to them where they wouldn't have a problem. But if you got one that's born on, let's say, the 4th or the 5th under Cancer, uh, Gemini, or Virgo, they may be a bit more challenged. Good question. Next question for you. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about politics? And you touched on the financial side of it a little bit, but what does this mean for us in politics and in fi finances? I hear you talking about the eight year and how this is a money year. Do does that mean that we could be possibly looking at more inflation this year? What does it mean for us here in the United States? Um, that's also a good question. First of all, eight rules politics as well as the number three. But normally the politics this year will be more conservative. They won't be kind of out there. They won't be all far-fetched. They won't be all new age. They're gonna, everybody's gonna be within their means to be conservative, to use a more practical, grounded, down-to-earth approach. As far as money is concerned, there is likely to be some challenge through no fault of anybody's own because one of the major opposition numbers to the number eight is the number four, which is the United States incorporated on the 4th of July of 1776. So they are likely, this nation is likely to be affected. In fact, as you know now, even so, the value of uh, <clears throat> the dollars going down where what bag of groceries is 30 or $40 is now 60, 70, $80 with no, without even blinking about it. Prices are going sky high, at least here in New York, where I live at the rents are exorbitantly high for little space. Um, and so, and, and it's, so what it happens is what it will do is keep people on edge. And so because this country has programmed its citizens to be more materialistic. And I got to have this. I got to have that. Those who are going to do well this year for 2024 will be those who know how to be able to prepare to do without. To not have that new car, but stick with that old car. Not trying to keep up with the Joneses and make an impression. Not start with a brand new seven-year note on a car. Okay. There was a time that when you bought a car, you paid it off in three years. Now it's at an average six to seven years. So it's doubled. Okay. And so when you think about it like that, so it's about being frugal. <clears throat> Actually, if a person could take this attitude, needs versus want, you might want that fur coat, but you need to pay your rent. You need to pay your mortgage. You might want this, but you need to have some food up in the cupboard. You know what I'm saying? It's that kind of thing that you do. And it and it's just being, since eight is conservative, being conservative with your spending habits. You don't have to have the latest gadget, the latest phone, 
the latest car, the latest TV, the latest that. As long as you can drive that car, I don't care if it's 50 years old. Not that somebody wants a 50 year old car. But the point is to make the best of what you have. If, if they can do that, then they will have no problems getting past this year. But if they're trying to keep up with the Joneses and what the, this person is doing and that celebrity is doing and what kind of car they got and then other neighbors car they got, they're going to they're going to be caught in a crisscross economically. And some of them will not be able to sustain it, sustain it, I should say. And then we're not talking about possible terminations, possible closures of businesses that's going to have a ripple effect throughout this country. So I would say that people need to err on the side of being a little conservative about getting the, the newest gadgets and gizmos. So other than being conservative, do you have any more tips for making it through this number eight year? Yes. Um, for everyone, they should think big. The bigger they think, the more they're likely to accomplish. For some reason, uh, I don't know whether the educational system or whatever has programmed people to be kind of limited in their thinking, limited in their expectations. But in an eight cycle, since it rules money, power, authority, achievement, and recognition, the attitude of everyone should be sky's the limits. Okay? That's what you want to aim for. That's why I was saying earlier in, the, in this interview, to aim for the sun, even if you only hit the moon, but think big. Don't think little trivial stuff. Think you can, it is a cycle of achievements to get things done. It is a cycle of recognition to make things happen and be recognized by your peer or family members or whatever the case is. It is a cycle of power, the ability to make things happen and get things done. It is about being efficient. And if you do that in your own way, by this same time next year, as we go into 2025, one will be very pleased at what they've accomplished and yet didn't have to spend a whole lot of money along the way doing it. So in other words, one can't expect to just cruise through this year and everything is going to be okay. No, not the only exception will be for the very well off who where money is not a where money is not a problem. But there are a lot of people right now under a lot of pressure to meet expenses <clears throat> like here in New York, a studio, a studio. We're not talking about a one, two, three, four bedroom. Goodness knows a studio alone is on average in about two thousand dollars a month. Now, does a person at McDonald's make that kind of money? Does a person at Burger King make that kind of money? Do you know what I'm saying? And and so <clears throat> I just gave that as an illustration, but there are a lot of people on a minimum wage. They really need to talk about a living wage to keep up with the inflation. How is it that the wealthier are getting wealthier and the little guy still staying in the little position and everything is going up except the salary? I mean, common sense dictate how far can you go without being under excessive pressure or whatever the case is? And out of that desperation, even people in the lower class of life still got a family, still got kids or food, you know, to bring home and feed their kids. And so they're going to figure out one way or the other to do it. So people will maybe do the five finger technique, you know what I'm saying, and take something or whatever the case is. But um, the point is that it's, it's, it's going to be a tough year and it's not tough, tough in a bad way that Lloyd said tough. And you got to understand all you got to do is focus on what needs to be done first rather than what you want. Because we all want something. We all want the best of this, the best of the cars, the best of the clothes, the best of the this, the best of the phone. That's how this society projected. That's why they project advertising everywhere you go to get the latest this, the latest that but it also gets you in the latest debt too, okay? And so right now they found that the uh, the credit credit card in, is in the trillions of dollars in debt. Student loans are in debt. So what I'm saying is, so for those that are trying to keep up with that, 
it is best this year to be more conservative and stay within your means. That's all. I think all of us want the best. A new car, a new this, a new that. But everything has a time. And right now, for those who are wealthy, those who make six-figure-plus type of income, they can deal with it. But unfortunately, that does not go for the masses of people. And for the masses of people, they're going to have to stay within their means in order to make it. So, okay, my car's four or five years old. That don't mean you got to buy a new car to impress your neighbors because your neighbor's not going to pay your bills. Your neighbor's not going to pay your notes. Your neighbor's not going to pay your insurance or auto auto repairs. They're not going to get you new tires. (laughs) It'll get you some looks and talk, but it ain't going to do nothing for you over and above that. So what I'm saying is since eight is an earth thing, it's about using some common sense. And there's nothing like common sense. Now that makes a whole lot of sense. (laughs) And you heard it right here. Needs versus want. Remember, Lloyd Strayhorn said that. You best believe. (laughs) (laughs) I just want to say it's been such an honor having you here. Thank you for coming out. Each time that I ask, we love it when you come. You always give so much value, so much knowledge and wisdom. Thank you so much. And I want you, before we go, to let people know how they can contact you. Well, One of the best ways is Linktree, that's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash numbers and you. So when they go to Linktree slash numbers and you, they'll find out how to get my books that are available on Amazon. They can get numerology reports. They can get my numerology app called A Star 8, that's A-S-T-A-R, the number eight, available on the platforms of Google and Apple. Um, they can hear my podcasts. Uh, they can also hear my audio book from my best selling book of the of the six books I've written. The best seller is Numbers in You, that is now available in audio uh, edition. Uh, they can get the free monthly newsletter. They can enroll in my online course that I teach, or they can join me on TikTok under Numbers in You, where they can also sign up for the beginners numerology classes strictly for beginners. And even intermediate and professionals can use it too. It's nothing like a refresher, nothing like reviewing. And um, there's uh, some other things, but all of that is under Linktree. Just go to Linktree slash numbers and you, and they'll get all the information that they need, how to even schedule a session with me if they like, although I'm booked for months, but they can. Yes, they go to lloyd-strayhorn.com or star8.com and link trees slash numbers in you. That's perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. And I must say this before I get off. There's this person I know that I've been following, um, and they have a show on understanding the subconscious and the power of the mind. And that show, that podcast is called Manifest on Purpose with Miss Kimberly. Not the drill, Miss Kimberly, but... You know what I mean? And I would suggest to anybody who want to understand the inner workings of the mind to know how to, and, and the beautiful part about this Manifest on Purpose podcast, the host actually takes her life's experiences and applies it in a way that applies universally to everybody. It's the most amazing thing in the most amazing way how this Kimberly that I'm talking about is able to do that and manifest on purpose. So as you heard during my presentation, I definitely took that phrase, what you manifest on purpose, that makes perfect sense. I advise everyone in the listening and viewing audience to go to that podcast and find out for yourself. Don't take my word for it, go there, listen, and you will find that it's down home, keep it real, but it makes so much sense. Thank you so much for that, Lloyd. You know what? I'm going to listen to that myself. I got to find that podcast. (laughs) 
<laughs> Once again, this has been an honor and a pleasure. Should Thank I you. put you down on the schedule for the next time? Because you know your heart to get in contact with. Yeah, it's automatic. <laughs> I'm just say, Lloyd, okay, it's time again. I'll, I'm big. All right. Okay. You can't really listen, I want to say you are you are an amazing, amazing woman, and God bless you and keep up the good work. And um uh, I wish you nothing for success, but success for the year coming up of 2024, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you so much. And I wish nothing but the same for you, Lloyd. Yes, yes. Until next time. Yes, and I will say this. There is one more phrase I like from Manifest on Purpose where the host says, the God in me loves the God in you. Is that, that how we're going to so close powerful. out? Yes, Is the that God how in me. Close out the show today. God in me loves the God in you. And when you pick Thank it up you. like that, that's powerful. <laughs> honey, that, excuse me. I don't mean honey like I know you like that, but that's powerful. That's powerful. The God in me loves the God in you. Just if everybody keep it in that real. attitude, it'd be a, such a much better world. Really. I'm really. trying to spread the love. Can't you tell? I'm trying to spread the love. It's working. It's working. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Lloyd. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Kimberly. And you take good care of yourself. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.